Russia has suffered its most serious setback since the start of the war in Ukraine. In the space of just a few days last week, Ukrainian forces recaptured an area in the Kharkov region that took Russia many months to gain control of. Since then, Ukrainian forces have been pushing towards other Russian-controlled areas in Donetsk, Zaporozhye, and Kherson. The Russian-Ukraine war has been and remains, directly and indirectly, the key driver of the global financial markets. The main channel is, of course, the energy market, given the Western sanctions on Russia's fast oil and natural gas exports. High energy prices by reducing the purchasing power of consumers and forcing central banks around the world to tighten monetary policy more aggressively than they would have otherwise have been responsible for the worst performance in stocks and bonds in recent years. What does Ukraine's recent success on the battlefield mean for energy prices and the outlook for financial markets? Does it mean that we're getting closer to the end of a war that has been punishing the poor and pushing the world economy ever closer to a painful recession? I'm David Wu, a former Wall Street strategist with a 20-year track record of making actionable predictions about major global change. Welcome to The Money Game, where I take on groupthink, propaganda, and conspiracy theories in my critical analysis of markets, economics, and politics. Before we begin, Please hit subscribe and the bell button so that you'll be notified when a new video comes out. The Russia-Ukraine war, which has had an outsized impact on financial markets, is now at a critical juncture. What this means is that, like it or not, making an investment decision at the present moment requires us taking a view on what comes next in the war. When there are a lot of uncertainties, scenario analysis can be a very useful tool to think about different potential outcomes and their market implications. Before I present a simple scenario analysis, here are some considerations that have important bearing on the outcome of the war. Ukraine's latest success on the battlefield is likely to strengthen the support in Washington and European capitals for Ukraine's continued war efforts. This means we can expect more money and more arms heading to Ukraine. Russian troops gave up the Kharkiv areas under their control without putting much of a fight. This could either mean the Russian defenders were no match for the Ukrainian attacking forces, or that Moscow no longer considered Izium in the Kharkov region to be strategic. There are no official numbers for the size of the Russian army in Ukraine. Some commentators place it at just 80,000. If true, this can explain the slow speed of the Russian advance in eastern Ukraine over the past few months. It is also consistent with Russia's claim that they are withdrawing troops from the Kharkiv region only to focus on their strategic goals elsewhere. It seems reasonable to assume that over the next month, Ukraine will try to ride the momentum of its recent success, and Russia will try to sweep the rest of the Donetsk before the planned referendum on November 4th. In other words, fighting will likely intensify, possibly a lot. Crude oil futures have eased over the past three months. The front month Brent futures are down from a high of $123 a barrel in June to just $93 a barrel as of this week. In the U.S., gasoline price is almost back at the pre-war level. However, given the fact that oil is priced in U.S. dollar and given the strengthening of the U.S. dollar during this period, oil price measure in terms of the purchasing power of the 20 largest oil consumers in the world paints a very different picture. Indeed, the unbound oil cost index that's GDP weighted and currency adjusted shows that the cost of oil to the world economy is up 30% year to date and is not far from the highest level over the past decade. The high oil price warrants our attention because this is despite one, the release of 25% of the U.S. strategic reserve over the past 12 months. Two, this is despite the minimum Okay, disruption so far of Russian oil production as Russian oil exports have rerouted to countries like China, India, and Turkey from the US, Europe, and Japan. Three, this is despite a drop in Chinese oil imports due to Beijing's continued enforcement of zero tolerance policy. In other words, there's very little slack in the supply demand balance to absorb any additional shock. The International Energy Agency just revised up their forecast of increase in oil demand in 2022 to 2 million barrels a day, primarily due to the switching from gas to oil for electricity generation in Europe. For example, Germany's natural gas imports have halved 
since the start of the war as the country seeks to reduce its dependence on Russia. If the war in Ukraine were to intensify, we could see a further disruption to Russian gas supply to Europe as we head into winter. This could push oil prices significantly higher. By the way, this does not even take into consideration of the fact that the European Union embargo on Russian crude and product imports that will be going into effect in February would affect 1 million barrels per day of Russian oil products and 1.3 million barrels basically per day of Russian crude. A new round of oil price increase will certainly not be kind to either stocks and bonds as it will further fuel both inflation and recession fears. Now let's map out some scenarios. My first scenario is that Ukrainian forces continue their counteroffensive by pushing forward into Donbas, Zaporozhia, and Kherson. This scenario has two possible outcomes. We will call the first outcome 1A. Ukraine inflicts a decisive defeat on the Russian army that will be forced to retreat. Putin is much weakened and Moscow sues for peace. This outcome will be clearly very bullish for stocks, with the cyclical sector outperforming the energy sector. European assets will outperform US assets, and the dollar will weaken against Europe. Let's call the second outcome 1B. Putin, facing a defeat, announces full military mobilization and issues a formal declaration of war. This outcome will be very bearish for stocks by turning the special military operation into an all-out war. Putin will considerably raise the stakes for Russia and for himself. This likely means all gloves come off and we go into a no holds barred war that will get even uglier than it is already. This could lead to a final rupture between Russia and the West with unpredictable consequences. In this outcome, oil price will likely retest the year high. Stocks will retreat further, potentially by another 20%, and European assets will continue to underperform US assets. Now let's look at my scenario too. In this scenario, Russia redoubles its effort to capture the rest of Donetsk before the November 4th referendum. Over the next two months, Russia succeeds in overcoming Ukrainian resistance in Bakhmut, Kramatorsk, and Slovyansk, and neutralize the missile threats to Donetsk City. In this scenario, by securing a buffer between Ukraine and Russia, we enter into a prolonged stalemate. Scenario 2 is not negative for stocks in Scenario 1A, but it is still negative. The sanctions against Russia will remain, and energy prices will stay high. A prolonged stalemate will be especially costly for Europe that will lose competitiveness and suffer from stagflation. Political fracturing can lead to disintegration of the European Union. In this scenario, it is conceivable that political leadership in Europe will eventually come to their senses and pressure Ukraine and Washington to reach an agreement with Russia. But this won't happen without things getting even worse. In other words, for stocks and European assets to do better, they will have to do worse first. What probability should we assign to each of these three scenarios? I'm not a military expert, but I believe the combined probabilities of Scenario 1B and Scenario 2 is greater than the probability of Scenario 1A, possibly much greater. And I suspect my view is not a controversial one. This means that if I'm right, the next phase of the war will be either just negative or very negative for stocks. So hold on to your siege. If you got something out of this program, I would appreciate you hit like and subscribe to my free YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about my investment strategy, come visit us at davidwuunbound.com. Thank you for listening.